Hey, what's up, guys? You know I have this weird scatter shot YouTube channel. Remember uh, when I went over the Japanese tanks? You know the the uh, I see that the there's videos on YouTube where like the Italian tank meme, the Japanese tank meme. Of course, these two uh, partners in the Axis Alliance, the Alliance of Evil. <laughs> uh, uh, the tanks that these uh, countries came up with. Were made jokes of, okay, when really in a lot of ways it was just a, it was, uh, you know, the timing of it. When you have uh, countries where the uh, the main funding is not to the uh, the tanks, uh, where the tank designs are great, when you know they're being designed in the uh, late thirties, early forties, they're great for that time. Uh, but the the arms race, you know, between what the Americans made and the Germans and the Soviets uh, through fighting each other, uh, you know, the the lesser the lesser the the junior partners of the Axis, to be frank, uh, it was harder to keep up. And in the case of the Italian medium tanks, I like you know I love the Osprey, New Vanguard series. So, um, Essentially, most of your Italian tanks were like these things, right? They call tankettes, right? Like a novelette is to a novel, a tankette is to a tank. Yeah. Uh, but I'll focus on this one for now. Uh, just the format of the book, lots of great photos. Uh, this tank here, of course, the, uh, the famous uh, medium tanks, right? The 11th, uh, the uh, mostly the M13 and the M14. And of course, it's precursor here, the M11. This is actually a cool tank. They only made a hundred of these. I mean, it was it's cool to look at. Uh, it had a cannon, finally, in the hull. Uh, and a machine gun turret. Right? Uh, kind of like the, 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 Grant, the Grant tank, the M3. Where you had the uh, heavy gun in the hull. Right? Only made about a hundred of these. Uh, these are the first medium tanks they had. Okay, most of uh, North Africa, the Italians had these things, um, which were sort of useless to be frank. They didn't work well even in the Spanish Civil War years earlier. But by 1940, this was the best they were able to come up with. And there's more to uh, the battles than just the technology or which they were behind. There's all kinds of things. It was to say the, the Italian reputation, uh, you know, as surrenders and, and, you know, going into the battle with their hands up and all that uh, stuff. A lot of it was British propaganda. Uh, the British really put a hurting on them early in North Africa. Uh, they were better organized, had better communications. Uh, they were led better. Uh, and they had mostly better equipment. But anyway, and of course, Austria, I love, always love the art. Right. Although, I will say, the photos and the, uh, the painted artwork is always classy. That's a cool tank. That's like something you could have, right? something you could buy. Right? Maybe it wouldn't be good against uh, you know, M3s and uh, uh, M4s, but it would be great uh, against you know, the coming chaos uh, that's coming. <laughs> yeah. um, anyway. It's the, uh, this is the main uh, medium tank, the M13, uh, which is not a huge tank. I don't like, I see this a lot. I see this computer-generated uh, art. I don't like it. I'm a, I'm a big believer in pen uh, and ink, uh, painting, you know, Peter Dennis, <clears throat> excuse me. I see them doing a lot. They did this with the... Uh, the last one I got was it's about uh, when the Russians, the Soviets finally invaded Manchuria at the end. It was all like computer generated. I didn't like it. I don't, I don't like it, guys. But and of course, the original color scheme of the M13s and M14s are black. But anyway, yeah. Uh, what can I say? Eventually, they were trying to make this. This was their heavy tank. This looks kind of cool. This looks almost like a Panther tank. The P-40. It's always the timing. The ch okay. Alright. Mussolini thought that there wasn't going to be much fighting. Threw him with the Germans. Uh, you could argue they're justified since, you know, Libya and North Africa is their backyard. Not the backyard of the British 
and the French, the pirates, right? The Viking pirates, the descendants of them. Um, you could argue that, but they they didn't think the war was gonna really go on. They weren't ready. They figured they would send some stuff, and it turned into a big problem. But uh, if you read, particularly uh, this great book here, this is this is a really good book here. I'm, I'm plugging this other book. And you see what really you know what really happened, uh, and you see that and, and you know. Uh, the, the courage of these men, okay, knowing that these tanks were, they were sort of a match for the early British cruiser tanks, never for the Matildas, right, the heavy tanks. Uh, once the American-made tanks were being used by the British, these things were really outmatched. And these dudes always fought hard. You never heard of Italians holding back saying, oh, I can't go out there. You know, like some of the Germans and the British and the Americans would do all throughout the war where, whoa, there's an anti-tank gun there. I'm not going there. Or there's, you know, the, the, the enemy tanks are better than ours. Uh, we're going to hold back. The Italians never did that, okay? And they were the bulk of the Axis forces in North Africa, by the way. Uh, you know, they couldn't keep up with the Germans. Literally, these tanks were slower. But then when the Germans were retreat, they didn't mind leaving these guys to fucking fight uh, and cover their retreats and catch hell. And these guys never stopped fighting, particularly these guys, you know, uh... The, the Italians never didn't go forward because they were afraid, knowing that they had, were no match for the enemy's equipment. Okay? Um, I mean, to the very end, these guys were the bulk of the Axis forces, uh, taking a lot of the, uh, the, the casualties. Anyway, uh, yeah, I'm sticking up for my Italian side here. Um, so this tank would have been great. By the time they were making this, uh, the, you know, the, the traitors and the king... Okay? had turned on Mussolini. Right. Uh, when they started finally making these, most of these, the Germans got... So I'll just say right here, the Semavente, right? These were the... Uh, taking the Sturmgeschütz idea where, hey, let's take the chassis of those M13 and M14s uh, whose cannons can't penetrate these uh, a lot of these British, the Matildas and the uh, American-made tanks for them. Let's put a heavier gun on it and just put it in the hull, right? Well... These things, when they came out, these things were pretty effective. They were very low. They were hard to shoot. Right? Problem was, at the end of the North African campaign, the Italians would have maybe like 19 of these, 20 of these. I think one battle, they had 30 of these. Okay, uh, And they made their presence known, but it was near the end of that campaign. It was too late. Okay, The battle of, you know... Uh, of logistics and production, they there was no way Italy could ever match the Americans or the Soviets. So, uh, I like this picture too. Look at this fucking guy. Yeah, you better pay up when he comes around. But uh, you see too the uh, height of it, and how low they were. And you have the seventy-five version, and you have the one hundred and five version. Uh, anyway, uh, what else to go over? They started making a lot of these. This is this is where the the computer model comes in, where I think it's decent. And man, this tank. If you look at YouTube videos of this, man, this thing was cramped. Uh, the hatch wasn't the easiest to get out of, right? So like you know when the chief died, when he's like, oh bugger, the tank's on fire, and the, this big six foot seven dude tries to get out. They weren't putting any any tall Italians in here for sure. Um, uh, you see the two machines are cool, right? But you you just see in general that. Uh, this thing was very cramped, slow. Although they had it, they were diesel powered, so they actually had a greater range than the petrol, as the British said. Yeah. And they started making stuff like this. Then look at this guy. Yeah, yeah, right. And eventually, when the uh, when the uh, uh, the Italians split into the Social Republic, um, fighting on, uh, the Germans uh, actually took a lot of these. Vehicles. Of course, the Germans. Took as much as they can. Okay? The, 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 the Germans didn't have a lot of production. So they made a lot of these tanks tanks their own. This thing, I remember this. This is at Aberdeen when I was at the Proving Grounds. I remember seeing this. That's a 90 millimeter cannon. This was a really good Italian gun. It was, it was as good as the 88. They just didn't have a lot of them. Anyway. Uh, just great. New Vanguard's great. Look at the uh, photos. Uh, everything, you know, 
you see that when the Germans start using them, they start giving them out, the loyal Italians, right? But mostly the Germans used these. They, they had to use whatever equipment they could at that point. Yeah, yeah. Wow, these, these Italian tank guys, man. Yeah, in North Africa, especially, which is where you had these tanks. You didn't even have these tanks in Russia, right? They had the light tanks in Russia. Uh, but the, the Italian tankers, man, talk about, you know, just like I was saying with the, with the Japanese tankers, these guys knew they were outmatched. And unlike the Japanese, they weren't fighting in jungles or hiding these things. Maybe in Italy they were able to a little, but most of the fighting done with this, these tanks uh, were on open ground where they were totally outmatched uh, range-wise, speed-wise, everything. And these guys still went forward and fought. And they, they would, and they... As time went on, they were winning battles. They were giving as good, if not better, than what they got. Man, read read LLA Main. Okay, the the British outnumbered the, these guys a lot, and they got they got stopped, and they got bloody noses uh, more than once, particularly in that battle. You know. Um, anyway, it's giving credit to them. You know, like I said, these guys they're ridiculed, and it's but people really know the real people know when they read in. These guys had courage, okay? and it's almost a damn shame how they were squandered. You know, I mean, I will say, uh, I'm a Mussolini fan in terms of the 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 country, the social thing, uh, but the imperial thing, right? The war thing, getting them into all these wars, not so big a fan of. Although the idea that the Italians were not going to co have conflicts with these other powers who thought it was okay to to take over and rule, you know. Uh, places closer to these people, well, it, it sort of mitigates it a little bit. But at the end of the day, even I'll say, man, Italy had no business being in this war. Uh, but once they were in, and the enemies they were fighting, right, the imperialist West, right, the Bolshevik uh, East, how could you not root for these guys, uh, you know, if you really think about it? Ah, well, yeah, leave a day after she.